I've been doing things differently like you're doing. You're creating client profiles. You're digging deep to get to know the clients. Survey done by a company in Boston that asked why clients left their advisors. 86% said, I didn't feel valued or appreciated. It wasn't about product. I didn't feel valued or appreciated. That's why I do a lot of birthday calls, anniversary calls, birthday breakfast, all within compliance. It's going to be under 100 bucks, right? You call the client and say, bring a couple friends. You just turned 65 or 48 or 27, whatever it is. Let's celebrate your birthday. Little things. They're just good reasons to keep in touch. Tom Kirk's story. Tom was my mentor when I was in the Air Force and I was stationed in Aviano, Italy. And um, he came up to me one day and he said, I know it's your four years are over in the Air Force. It's time to go back to the States. He said, I've, you've been through all these financial planning programs that we have here at the, at the base uh, through the City Colleges of Chicago. And he said, you're going to be wildly successful. I just know it. I said, well, Tom, let me tell you something. You know, I appreciate your vote of confidence, but I grew up on welfare. I ran away from home at 16. You know, my parents both dropped out of school in sixth grade. And what type of party was I having in my mind? Pity party, you bet. I was finding excuses to fail based on my past. But here's what I've learned and here's what I've studied with studying winners all these years. The past does not predict the future. It doesn't matter where you came from. It depends what's in here. It depends what's in here. But more importantly, what's in here? What do you want to create? So Tom just stopped me dead in my tracks and he said, Neil, let me tell you a story. He said, you didn't know this because I never brought it up in class, but he said, I was a fighter pilot during Vietnam. He said, I was on a bombing mission one day. The jet was attacked by a missile. Just before it exploded, I catapulted out, and it's not called the can I went through the canopy. When I landed, I was unconscious, and I woke up in Hanoi Hilton, which is a prison camp. He said, I lived there for five years. Here's what I learned when I got out. We all have stuff in our past. Deal with it. It's gone. You can dwell on it, or you can make the most of life going forward. He said, it's not the government's problem, it's not your company's problem, it's not your parents' problem, it's up to you. It's your responsibility. I've never had a pity party since, okay? So I just want to do a time check. Are we still good? Do I have five minutes before Rich? Yeah. Okay, good, fantastic, we're right on track. Um, Bob also talked about people coming in early, advisors coming in early to the office. So I want to share this story about my great friend, Doug, Doug Dubiel. Doug would show up at 6.30 in the morning at this Boston office. And he would get in there early because he knew the secretaries or these assistants back then of the CEOs weren't in. And he would dial for dollars. And this is you know, 1989, 1990, 1991, things like that. He always got in there early and, and he left around 6 o'clock. So I had an appointment with this other Doug across the street. And I called on Doug and I said, Doug, what's going on? Can I help you with a client event? How's life? How's business? Doug, at the point, that point, was about 60 years old, had been a stock jockey most of his career, and trying to transition. Doug looks at me. This is my friend Doug at Merrill. This is the other Doug at UBS. He said, Neil, this business stinks. I hate it. Nobody wants to buy anything. I don't like coming to the office. And he went on and on and on for five minutes. I'm a commission salesman. Where's that conversation going? Two words I love to say to people like that. A bye bye Nothing I do, because I'm very respectful. So I literally walked across the street to the Merrill Lynch office to visit with my friend, Doug. I said, Dougie, what's going on? So we called him Dougie. He was a kid. He was 29 years old. He'd been in the business five years. His mentor was the number one producer at Merrill Lynch. That was his mentor. He learned work ethic. He learned what to say. He learned scripting, all these great things. Doug says, Neil, I know we had an appointment. But he said, I've been working with this guy for two years. Just, I met him on a cold call. He said, just keep in touch with me. Keep in touch with me. And he said, I did it. I did it diligently every three months. He said, this guy just sold his business. So this, this is actually in the 90s. He sold this business for a billion dollars. He's given me 500 million because I did what I promised. This is a kid. It might, I'm old, right? so he's a kid to me, right? And he said, the other half billion is going to Dean Witter at the time. And he said, he's going to judge us at the end of one year to see who gets the other half billion. <laughs> Doug got it. So that's the second largest individual trade, individual ticket for one person. It wasn't a company. He sold his company. $500 million. Get in early. Know what you want to say. Know, know who you want to call. We can't call the world. Narrow it down. Right? 
know what, exactly what you want to say and then keep your promises. It's a simple business when you do things like that, right? Consultators.